Hello everybody. Welcome back to another week of Pester Quest. Yay! Um, last week I went into it having no idea who to expect, um, and that worked out well. So once again, I am blind. I do not know who we are going to see once I click the start button. Um, I know like Sullux has been alluded to, uh, Tavros and Terezi were both alluded to in Briska's week. Uh, that'd be an interesting pair, I think. Uh, so... Yeah, Tavros and Terezi are kind of the two I'm hoping for. Although if Terezi, although if we get Terezi this week, then it's all downhill from here. <laughs> it's like, it's like you have, you know, it's like all the best trolls are are gone, right? It's like Kanaya, Vriska, Terezi. That's it. Uh, it's like everyone else is like, yeah, it's the, it's like the pet is fine. Could do the pet quest. Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. When we do get to the pet, when we do get to the pet route, it really will, we really will finally be playing the pet quest. Ha! That's funny. All right, cat. If you're gonna be drinking my water, you're gonna have to get off my lap. All right, down you go. So anyway, let's see who we're gonna get this week. Da -da, drum roll, please. Oh, and it's um oh interesting. It's a uh, Equus and Terezi. Not a pair I would have expected. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the Peta quest will have to wait. Apparently, uh, because we're doing Equus first. All right, <laughs> horse time. <laughs> time for some horseplay. <sighs> it's a clear, cool night, and you've wandered around trying to decide whose hive you should crash up before the sun comes up. It's nice having so many options for places to, for places to stay. You've cultivated a decent community for yourself, and there's an ember of pride in your belly about it. Still, you found yourself feeling a little aimless. The last couple of friends you made were pretty intense. <laughs> That's not necessarily a bad thing, but you're vibing for a chiller frequency right now. Yeah, that got a little intense there, didn't it? Um... <laughs> oh, God. I laughed so hard when I realized we were getting Gamgee and Frisco back to back. That was, that was a fantastic week. Um... Alrighty. Uh... There's still a while until it gets dangerously light out, so you sort of pop around, seeing what feels right. It's kind of fun to test out the boundaries of your powers. You use it to find friends, but you're not really sure how far it goes. You think tree, and you don't know how your magic brain decided which one to choose, but luck if you aren't sitting in an extremely high branch a second later. You try it again. Cat, what are you... Or my cat messing around with something. You try it again with whatever concept comes to mind. Garden. Cave. Mall. And it all works. Oh. These are some... These are some memories right here. It's like we already got... It's like we already got the uh, boulder flashbacks last week, but... <laughs> you know. <laughs> here we are. Here in the garden. <laughs> Let's play a game. <laughs> Chat's already ahead of me making that joke. <laughs> and of course... Uh, cave see this is the cave where this is the cave where we almost died in that one uh timeline that we completely nixed um and of course uh daria's mall which is still sad you don't remember ever ever having been to any of these specific places but you feel a strange prickly affinity for them each time your feet touch the ground they're all pretty generic loca locational nouns though you wonder if it works for things that are more abstract. Quickly, before you can talk yourself out of it, the uh, talk yourself out of the naivete of it, you think, home. It still takes you a minute to open your eyes, even after you feel your guts all back in the right place. Because what if you wake up in a room that feels like yours? Or worse, and infinitely more likely, what if you don't? You breathe in deep and immediately cough wretchedly? Aww. You open your watery eyes, clinging to the hope that maybe you came from a land of dusty comforts, where you always just breathe in layers of dust, and it's fine. It's not fine. You've landed inside one of the spindliest, most precarious hunks of metal that has ever been bolted onto the side of a cliff. It looks like some ancient outpost, not homey at all. It's like, yeah, it's Teezius' hideout. <laughs> That's home for us. That is actually kind of sweet. Um... People lagging. 
Yeah, just refresh the page and the lag should clear up. Of course that, of course that wouldn't work. It was stupid to try. The feet is bitter in your mouth. It was our hideout that we introduced to Teezius, wasn't it? Um, oh yeah, I forgot. Like, did Teezius introduce us to this place, or did we introduce Teezius to it? I honestly, I honestly forget now that you mention it. I'm pretty sure it was Terezis before we came along. I don't know. Anyway, so someone go back and replay the route and get back to me on that. Anyway, there's a twisty part of you that wants to curl up on a particular piece of floor and take a nap. Aww. You can't work out how much of that urge is just you wanting to give in. So, just in case you don't surrender to it. Oh, that's a big mistake. Here's the teasiest. Ugh. Maybe you'll come back another time and shift through all of that shit in the shelves. But for now, you're not sure how structurally sound this thing is, and you can't take any more disappointment. So you try one more time to pop it somewhere that you haven't been before. What was that one guy's name that Equus, that Gamgee mentioned? Oh yeah, Equus. Maybe he's chill. You think his name and zap away. Imagine yourself leaving an edgy, despondent swirl of dust in your wake. <laughs> Are we, <laughs> did we really just pop in just in time to get punched by Equus? Oh, oh. Oh, I forgot how horrifying this is. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. This is. Uh, at least that. Yeah, at least they have thongs. There is that. Can we do terraces? We will. Gotta do terraces second. There is an order to these things. Like there is actually like I'm not even not even though, like being facetious. There actually is an order to these. Anyway, your magical zap calibration if, uh, maybe isn't as off as you thought, because you pop in on Equus as close to as close as possible to get to the dude without landing directly on top of him. The astonishing unchillness of the situation is imini is imminently apparent. He's mid jump, mid yell, mid sweat, and mid swing <laughs> of an outlandishly beefy arm down towards you. <laughs> You freeze frame like an anime protagonist, uh, analyzing their choices mid battle. Uh, in your drawn out split second of observational window, you realize he's not aiming at you, but in the direction of whatever noisy whirling thing you have to plop down in front of. Uh, fuck? Are we not gonna get music yet? As soon as he sees you, his eyebrows shoot up above his uh, busted ass sunglasses, and, he yell, and, his, and his yell strangles itself into panic. His arm shudders as though he's trying and failing to alter its glorious faceward face trajectory. You really do not want to get your face punched off your head, <laughs> so you scream and zap just outside the high arched door on the far left of, on the far end of the room. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> more! Uh, it's, this is never going to end. You hear a deep, meaty thunk, followed by a groan, and the sharp metallic crunch. The whirring stops. Oh my god, is he dead? Is the other thing dead? Should you go check on him? You skitter away from the door and then back to it? I'm sure what to do. <laughs> uh. Uh. Was that? No, it can't have been. Hello? Show yourself this instant. Ah, fuck. He does not sound happy. His words are a little garbled too, like some teeth just got knocked out by who is who is whoever's ass, but by who's whoever's ass he was just kicking. You weigh your options. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. You don't know. Equus looks super strong and even more pissed. You really, really do not want to be next in line to get about to get disemboweled. The friendship with this guy is really meant to be. Maybe you can reconnect with Gamgee as an intermediary. That sounds like a normal and cool time. Panic grips you as his heavy footsteps approach the door. Forgetting you have super useful zap powers specifically for use in time-sensitive panic situations, you turn and run. You glance over your shoulder. Ah, oh, crap, we're on the right route. <laughs> you glance over your shoulder as you go and collide spectacularly with a brick wall. <laughs> oh, no. 
Oh, it's Arthur. Looking at from the brightly polished floor where you lay, inexplicably doused in milk and broken glass, you realize it wasn't the wall you hit. It's a glistening part pseudo-humanoid part horse cow beast person? Another godforsaken Lucius, maybe? <laughs> godforsaken is right. Seriously, though, where's the music? You really aren't sure, but the fact that his top half kind of looks like a more da looks a lot looks kind of like a more dapper you fills you with the most cursed mixture of fear and curiosity you've felt this far. He doesn't seem bothered by you at all, only anxiously trying to get by you. You try and stand up, but you slip on the milk and eat shit, just as Equus bursts through the door. <laughs> Cat. They both tower over where you lay, flopping, <laughs> flopping ineffectually in a burgeoning puddle of froth. God, is everyone in this house just made of muscle? You've had enough of this regular strength escape, sh escape attempt shit. Bruised, humiliated, and covered in dairy, you zap on out of there. Oh, hi, kitty. You wanna play? Alright, here. I'll help you play for a bit. I think you can see that, too. <laughs> really. Okay. <laughs> See my cat dancing in front of my uh my blind luck messenger bag. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> you haven't entertained yourself for a while, kitty. All right, uh, there we go. Transition. Actually, remember to fix my screen for once. <laughs> you zap on out of there. <laughs> Humiliated. Okay, there, there, we, there must be a bug or something because we didn't even get like the little ending jingle. Um, unless I forgot, unless I turned the music off and forgot about it. Let me see. Oh, whoops. Yep, there's the problem. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> so that's on me. <laughs> Alright, close menu. Load. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I forgot at some point... At some point I went to get screenshots of Vriska, because... Because of course I did, and I turned the sound off, because I didn't need it. Alright. Back, back to where we were. Alright. Be brave! Nice music, in fact. Ah, oh no, oh man. You know, the Gamsy seal of approval is maybe not the most credible, but this guy might be might be an okay guy. And it would definitely be your fault if he, if he was hurting there. You should at least check on him, explain or something. You can zap away if it comes down to it. You do the polite thing this time and knock. He opens the door fast, like he was just on the other side of it. <laughs> you both jump. <laughs> oh god, this door. How's the volume? Too loud, too quiet? This is a boppin' ma- this is a boppin' soundtrack, but how's it compared to my voice? Just wanna check some volume levels. Volume's good? Okay. Good to go. You do the polite thing this time and not good about it. You both jump. <laughs> he collects himself and glares at you, arms crossed against his heaving chest. Rivulets of blood and sweat run together and pool in the divot above his weird alien clavicle, and a low menacing sound rumbles through him. You can feel it in your teeth. Holy shit, he's terrifying! Explain yourself immediately. <laughs> what the hell is that? Yeah. Equus needs a little practice smiling, I think. You think you might shit your pants on the spot, but he gives you a quick up and down and rearranges his expression to a sort of forced smile. It doesn't really feel any more welcoming, what with the blood dripping down his chin, but the fact that he's trying is maybe a good sign? You hold in your fear of shit just in case. Or, perhaps, come in and take a seat. He steps aside to beckon you through the door, then sort of freezes. With his arms crossed, one of his, hand, one of his hands looks like a hoof. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. It's probably a coincidence. 
unless you should be the one instructing me, in which case it would behoove you to make that promptly apparent. I cannot work out how exactly to address you when you don't wear a cast symbol and you look like that. Which I'm either very sorry for or quite X... X... X about? Quite percentile about? I'm either very sorry for or quite excited? Cross? Oh, cross. Okay, there we go. Which I'm either very sorry for or quite cross about, depending on where the truth lies. Either way, I'm re either way, I'm regained to perspire about it. So I'm with it right now. Man, he's really struggling. The anger you felt radiating off of him before is still there, but that doesn't seem to be all that all of what's driving him. It's like there are two competing forces inside of him: one that wants to yell at you, and one that wants to get yelled at by you. <laughs> Equus is Equus is like the patron saint of switches. You might conceptualize these forces as fierce animals, warring in a glorious and unwavering balance. Horses, perhaps. Anyway, you'll workshop that metaphor later. You tell him you know you look weird, but you promise you're cool. You know a friend of his. At the mention of Gamgee, the corners of his lip curls up into something complicated, so you change course really fast, just in case. And Carcat! Does he know Carcat? What a guy. He eyes you warily, or you think he probably does. Well, with, with his eyes hidden behind his shades, you can't be sure. But he's being very still. Sweat and blood are still just fucking running down his face, and he's not even acknowledging it. You laugh nervously. You both continue to stand there, waiting for the other to make a move. It would be super helpful if someone was assertive around here. <laughs> Luckily, some kind of cow centaur man, his Lucius, you assume, breaks the awkward doorway stalemate by silently trotting up and handing Equus a desperately needed towel. He then offers you both some fro frosty glasses of milk. <laughs> uh, inside you there are two horses. One is Equus and one is Andrahasi. <laughs> yep, you are Dirk. <laughs> no, that sounds, uh, that sounds about right, yeah. Something deep inside you feels a swell of warm recognition for the ritualistic moment of a friend's pair and bringing you snacks. So you down that thick shit in one go. Cat, what are you? The Lucius mustache flutters in appreciation, and after a nod between him and Equus, he leaves as quietly as he came. I see you're an aficionado of the sweetest of vectors. This speaks to the likelihood of your nobility, which is reassuring. I may be able to overlook the circumstances of our meeting, then. If you can provide strong evidence, of course. Tell me, are you also a hoofbeast art enthusiast? <laughs> he beckons you inside the room, and as you follow, you tell him you're not really sure what that means, but probably you're a fan of a lot of... Oh. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, that's what that means. Cool, yeah. You know, whatever. You feel like you've learned once that... You feel like you learned once that anything can be art if it feels right. So art can definitely be the, uh... well missled horsemen on the walls of this here living space. Equus wumbles in agreement and gestures towards a chair. It's one of those cool red and black gamer-themed chairs with embedded speakers. There's a lot of that kind of decorating motif in here, which is a little at odds with the high ceilings and engraved doorways and general blue-blood old money architecture. Oh yeah, <laughs> and there are broken bows and robot parts all over the goddamn fucking place. Not neat little stacks or connected to other robot parts to create whole robots. Just an absolute wasteland of obliterated robo corpses, like they all were torn limb from limb and then just scooched off towards the wall. A fair few of them are splattered in blood too, dried. It looks almost black, but the fresh stuff on the fists of one of the you know, of the one in pieces at your feet is bright indigo. On the other hand, it is absolutely a relief to see that it's all metal and not flesh part, flesh body parts scattered to the floor. But also, it's still, you know, not not fucked up looking. <laughs> Your smile probably has too many teeth in it to seem normal, but Equus returns it in kind and leans. Uh, what he probably thinks is casually against the edge of his desk. It creaks under his weight. Jesus, he could just end you in a half second, couldn't he? Yeah, he probably could. 
you plainly have mutual acquaintances. Since when does he have a count? Uh, maybe those are supposed to be zeros. You claim we have a mutual acquaintance. So demonstrate it. He nods towards the screen of his desktop, where he has Trollian open. Oh, fuck. Okay. I guess you could just click on someone and ask them to prove it. He seems to know both Karkan and Gamgee, and between the two, you know he's most li uh, you know who's most likely to be online and ready to pester and be pester at all times. So you click his screen name and start typing. So you click his screen name and start typing. Uh, Centaur Sesico began uh, trolling Carcino Genesis. Hey, Carcat, I hope you're having a good day. I just have a quick favor to ask you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, also, I miss you. What the? What the fuck? What happened to you? <laughs> Where's your horrifying quirk? How am I supposed to saddle up for some truly nauseating conversation if you don't have a fit, a not veil at all bulge reference greeting me at the beginning of every one of your excruciating messages? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sick? Like, in a new way? <laughs> oh, right, Jesus, you're logged in as Equus. Your fool ass just started typing like you had your own account, for some reason. You blame on the nerves and get to clarifying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, this is your new friend. After I dropped you off yesterday, I wandered about for a while. Now I'm hanging out with Equus. You know, this is weird. This is the first time we've had, like... Actual unambiguous dialogue from M MSPA reader. Like there's, there have always been the times where like the text box is clearly things that we're saying, but this is just straight up dialogue. Like unambiguously, this is just things. These are just words that are spewing out of MSPA reader. Weird. Oh. Uh. Haha. <laughs> sorry. This is your new friend. After I dropped you off yesterday, I wandered around for a while, and now I'm hanging out with Equus. I'm using his computer. Oh. My pusher almost fucking gave out on the spot. I don't think he trusts me. Can you vouch for me? Oh, hold on, let me just bask in the concept of the two of you hanging out. <laughs> this is a mental masterpiece. A tableau of awkward fucking splendor. I legitimately do not know what sort of short circuit he must be happening in his brain to try and make sense of you. Please, don't tell me a single fucking thing about it. Please, don't tell me a single fucking thing about it later. Okay. Phew. I'm done now. Is he watching? <laughs> Equus leans over your shoulder and tucks his hair behind his ear so he doesn't get in the, w in the way of his typing. <laughs> oh my god. It's a bow and arrow. Any resemblance otherwise only a pleasant coincidence? <laughs> he says pleasant coincidence. <laughs> and yes, I am watching. Okay, whatever. Listen up, you milk log chum squealer. This little guy right here, the one you're probably dripping sweat all over, that's one of the realest people you'll ever hope to make. Realest friends you'll ever hope to make. Sure, they'll send you your life's clip. Sure, they'll send your life careening horrendously off course, but it will absolutely be worth it for the level of dedication they bring to the table. Don't even bother with the blood color horseshit with this one, since they're the only ones one of their species. Just roll with it for once in your wretched life. Don't fuck this one up, Zack. <laughs> they're an abomination, and they wouldn't know what the boundary was if it took out a residence in their grease chute, but you two have those thing two things in common, so in this case, that's a good thing. <laughs> Equus inhales sharply, and you wonder what Equus meant by what Carcat meant by that. About Equus, you mean? Sure, you're an inexplicable being, neither earthly nor Alternian, but with weird, itchy memories about having lived in both planets. But he doesn't seem out of the but, that, but, but he doesn't seem out of the normal range for fucked up, a fucked up, considering troll standards. In fact, how about this? That is sufficient. Goodbye. <laughs> He minimizes the window and steps back, somehow sweatier than he was before. He taps the towel gingerly to his forehead. That was great. Uh, let's see what's chat. Uh. Uh. Oh, oh, car cat, I love you. So, we've now been properly introduced. Okay then! You definitely thought he was going to be more thorough than that. He does seem a little shaken up. 
So maybe you should just be thankful the conversation got cut short before I could really dig too deep into your lore and get judgmental about it. I... <laughs> it's an oddly... It's an oddly adorable pose right there. It's like... <laughs> this, this is sub Equus. I do not know the standard method of communication with your species. You will take the lead here, and it will surely become clear how I should proceed. <laughs> yes, that sounds extremely feasible. <laughs> you will now begin. You will now begin the friendship process. <laughs> I command it. <laughs> oh, sure, you got this. Uh, how exactly do you got this? <laughs> Oh, man. I legit have no idea which one of these is the right answer. <laughs> oh. Head Canada and the pet have made his gloves for him. but entirely possible. Uh, show your gold powers are... So, we're both freaks, huh? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Let's... I don't know. I honestly do not... Both of these could go so far off the rails, and they could go off the rails and still work. So, I don't know, let's just pick the top one and see what happens. Great, you can do that. Making friendship happen is like the one skill you actually have. From what you recall, you have a 100% success rate at it, too. Mm, arguably? So this, bloody so this bloody rapport is safe in your hands. Excellent. You really weren't sure he'd be down for this. It really seemed like he might be coming to kill you when you heard when you heard him stomping towards the door earlier. Kill you? I would never. He cuts himself off, as though he didn't intend to admit he didn't have it in him to murder you, and clears his throat. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm sorry, just just yes. It's like look at this is a this is this is adorable. <laughs> it's, just, it's like I it's I never I did not expect adorable Equus, and yet here we are. Undeniably, it's here, and it's amazing. At first I thought you might be Arthur, my Lucius. It's ridiculous looking back. Well you do share a sort of globular padded resemblance. How did you come to entangle yourself in my brawl, only to immediately escape? Are you Abnormally fast? I admit that particular method of being strong had not occurred to me, but I am intrigued. I too would like to test the limits of physical capability. Oh no, you can just zap places. It's kind of strength, maybe? If you want to define a superpower that way. Uh, you show off a bit, since you know Equus likes demonstrations. You tell him about how you tell him about how all you have to do is think of the place or person you want to visit and pop! You bop to the top of a pile of robot parts, then back in front of him on the floor. It's like that, except anywhere. I see. That is exceptional. <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> Sweat.exe. He sort of just starts quaking gently where he stands. He rubs his neck with his towel, but he's not really even sweating any more than he, than he has been already. It's as though in his excitement he forgot to sweat and just dabbed by force of habit. Is that a thing? Why are you even why are you even noticing this shit? Is it possible to bring along a pillion wire rider? Well, like is that funny with you? An answer you extend an elbow for him to grab. <laughs> his whole vi body is vibrating by this point. He reaches his hand out but stops just before he touches you, like you might like you might shock him. Oh my god. <laughs> Equus, you okay, boo? <laughs> It's okay, it won't hurt, you say. <laughs> His fingers twitch just above your elbow, and his mouth purses in distrust. You're not exactly sure You're not exactly sure what he's worried about, since you're extremely undangerous, but you let him have a moment to work through whatever he's nervous about. He takes a steadying breath, 
It's a little unsettling to see his face relax, even briefly, into calm, clear lines. Uh, flippy, flip palm up, his hand slowly cradles your forearm from below. He nods, a sharp, determined movement, and starts telling you what to do again. You will take me with you. Her name is Nepeta. Do you require any other information, or will that be sufficient? That ought to do it! You haven't heard of her, but you don't think you... But you don't think you... You haven't heard of her, you don't think. But you feel immediate urge of excitement about this little jaunt. It's probably mostly just the friendship thirst talking, but you can't help but feel like this is a connection that is supposed to be made. Like it's something that matters. Aw, maybe. <laughs> this is sweet. How is it going to go wrong? <laughs> you zap away. The pleasant little cosmic slip and slide feeling when you zap around is jolted, like you got yanked off the ride with a, fi with a fish hook to your guts. You land back exactly where you started. That did not work. Did you mislead me? No, this should work. You're not even high this time. I bet it, I bet it's literally because we haven't gotten into Peta's route yet. Like, that's literally it. It's just fourth wall breaking shenanigans that we haven't gotten into Peta's route yet, so we're not allowed to go see her. It's like narrative the narrative forces will not allow us to retcon into something that hasn't that literally hasn't happened yet. As impressive as the strength of your power is, perhaps you need to apply more attention to the more intricate details involved. She is an olive blood, very short, and shamefully unkept. This information will help. You hope so. He uh, is starting to look pretty tense, even with the fawn even with the fawn lilt in his voice as he talks about his messy friend. You give it another whirl, and then you feel it. That same weighty glare in the back of your neck telling you you don't belong. It's that thing- it's- It's that fucking T-posing bastard again. Who may or may not be Ultimate Dirk. <laughs> Fuck, you got zap blocked again. You. Will. Try. Again. Each world is growled out one at a time between his clenched teeth. Blood trickles through the cracks in his bite now at the corner of his lips. Ooh. You really don't think it's going to work, but Equus looks like he's a second away from losing his shit, so reluctantly you comply. <laughs> yep. Called it. Quit fucking trying to skip ahead. It's not going to work. She. This is creepy as shit. Can we just, like... <laughs> like, I... First of all, I called it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, like... Be excited about that for me, but also, like, this is creepy as shit, and yeah, that really does sound like Dirk. Like, I kind of had a suspicion, like, like, I, I forgot to actually say this on camera, but, um, but, like, I think that the person, like, when we had that little boulder interlude with Briska, like, I think she was talking about Ultimate Dirk watching us, because, like, we also, because, like, we also had, like, a little flashback to Doc Scratch, and Doc Scratch flat out denied that he had anything to do with it, and, and, like, he's a misleading motherfucker, but he does not, in fact, lie outright, um, so, yeah, Ultimate Dirk is keeping an eye on us. Ugh, anyway, Jesus Christ, it's Kleiner from Gary's Mod? Yeah, maybe. Ugh. As you hurtle through space-time towards Equus's floor, you start to wonder if this is just going to be what happens now when you try to make friends. You accept this truth in your heart as your face accepts the impending wood planks. Equus lands on his feet a little ways from you, his hands balled in the fists, bellowing with impotent rage. He's not even saying words, just suddenly in an agonized guttural, guttural wail. He punches an already dead robot torso leaning against the bookshelf. In punctuation, he kicks its decapitated head, which explodes in the shower of bolts and sparks. As the dust settles, you see him dutifully wiping himself down with a towel, breathing hard. Oh, you're so sad! <laughs> uh, if we, if the, if the Pena's route does not get us together with Equus, I'm going to be fucking pissed. He seems to have worked his anger out because he walks with purposeful grace, as though he learned it in cut in cuddling. I have no idea what that word is. Cotillion. And sits next to where you're still sort of laying on the floor. You're both silent for a beat. Equus tugs at a lock of his hair, anxiously wrapping around his finger. His hands fall into his lap. 
I apologize for that display. The disappointment emotion is not my favorite. I feel better now, however. My Moira lives very far away, so our paths have never been able to cross. Whatever force is blocking us seems to wield significant narrative power, so I respect its whims as, a, as above mine in status. For now. <laughs> For now? Huh. You know, it, it happens. You're no stranger to the ups and downs of friendship. The trick is to know when to keep trying and when to fall back, no matter how futile it feels or how alone you are. Your morale is impressive, considering your circumstances. That's probably mostly a compliment? You're not really sure. Your circumstances definitely feel like they could be worse. You are very sure of yourself. How do you manage this when you are the only one of your kind? Without a society to tell you how to act or feel, how do you know if you're living in the correct way? How do you know where you belong? Or if you belong? Fucking ouch. The desire to belong is a yawning wound in your guts, one that never seems to heal. You try not to let that rip too many stitches out of it. You never feel totally secure, you say? There's always fear, always doubt, always pain. But you find people in unlikely places, make community when and where you can. Shit, you have belongings at, what, like eight different people's houses by now? It's not the same as having your own spot, but it's definitely something. You start off on the defensive, but you realize it's true. So, really, you figure, you're still defining yourself by your relationships to other people. Just, but that can come from a good place, and not just a twisted and forced one. You get wanting to know you're doing something right, unlocking your own mentally devised set of achievements for that sweet dopamine rush, but leaning on a fucked up so so social system for direction and validation doesn't really help him, and it definitely isn't helping many others. You'll need that. You'll need that to figure yourself out. His brow furrows, and you can almost hear a couple of the 4,672 rigid barriers in his brain creaking open. <laughs> uh, it's like, we're going to need a little bit more TNT to blow Equus's mind, but we're getting there. It's not just other people, you think. You find strength. Oh, sorry. Strength. Is that right? In your own self, too. You've met a lot of people and learned a lot of ways to be, but you're still working on that, on what it means for you. No, it is not right, but I appreciate the attempt. This type of understanding does not come easy to me, but I believe I am following. In my case, I have striven to locate and retool the edge of my own ability. Physical prowess is a relatively typical indigo trait, but I am abnormally strong. I've worked to hone it in an attempt to make sense of myself and why I am like this. I'm reigning in an aberrant trait and defining myself by it. He gestures to the god awful robot mechs, messed, and flexes his hand. The blood has coagulated since you two started talking. He stares at it. This way of thinking may not always be a good thing, however. Certain habits are hard to break. Though there are loopholes in every rule, I often lose track of rich regulations I actually enjoy following, and which I just do, and which I just I, and which I just do not know how to disregard. At least with this hobby, all the stakes are under my control, with no chance of others getting hurt. Unless they haphazardly zap in between your fight, looking for friendship, that is. <laughs> His smile is broken and rigid, but as it was the first time, but it feels different, backed by the rough warmth of his laugh. Yes, do not do that again. <laughs> Aw, this is sweet. Next time you will zap to the front door and Arthur will let you in. Next time, you think, and you smile back. Hey! Excellent victory! <laughs> uh, that was great. <laughs> uh... Imagine the intense cute that must have happened when they met in the game. We saw what happened when they met in the game. Uh, Nepeta pounced him, remember? <laughs> Next episode, uh, Equus kills Ultimate Dirk. I, I would take it. <laughs> Meow rails. <laughs> oh, eh. Dirk's one weakness. Uh... 
But yeah, we had, but yeah, we had better actually like unite those two, especially since this was the success route. Like, if this had been the failure route, like I could understand like time shenanigans be you know like the time cannon shenanigans be what they are and whatever. But like now, now it's like MSP Reader has no excuse. Like as soon as we find the pet, uh, MSP Reader had better be like you, you here <laughs> you know if that doesn't happen that that has to be the peta's route it just it has to be okay uh let's see so let's see how that all goes wrong i am i am legitimately curious how this is gonna this is gonna end in horse porn <laughs> it's why it's like let's be real this is gonna end in horse porn <laughs> like come on we all know this <laughs> uh you decide to just go for it. Sometimes leading into what could potentially be a super sensitive topic for someone ends up being the key ingredient to a friendship pie. You can see it now. Equus Quine, thank, thank, thankful you are here to talk about whatever this unspeakable speakable commonality you share is. You wiping his tears away with, with his already pretty swoked towel. You shake yourself out of your daydream and drop this sweet loaded question right in his lap. Holy shit, you can't wait till this works. Okay, like... I already know this is the failure route, but, like, come on. Like, you would... It's like, at this point, you would know that you messed up. <laughs> uh. Excuse you. <laughs> Speak for yourself. My standing is unblemished. Karkai is only comparing us in that way to further the ruse that he is uh, removed from that particular category. It is a delicate social dance. Oh, okay. I'm not really sure Carcat sees it that way, but hey, whatever works for them. Anyway, you know, he's just yelling a lot about something that's not a big deal, as is his manner of showing affection. But you just thought he meant, like, the horn thing? The horn thing? Oh, shit, you're sorry. You don't know, you don't know what things are and aren't cullable around here, you know? It's almost like it's all entirely arbitrary at the whims of whoever's in charge or something. You like to look, personally, but you haven't made friends with someone with a broken one before, so you're not really sure how common it is. It is relatively uncommon. <laughs> we're, gonna make, we're gonna make Equus self, self, um... We're gonna make him self-aware because of his broken horn. This is gonna be hilarious. They're exceptionally sturdy, so it takes something very strong to break them. It looks like he may be able to tell he might be about to tell you the story, but somehow you keep not learning the lesson where you should just chill and experience something instead of leap to, uh, instead of leap to try instead of leap to try and figure it out before it happens. So, fueled by enthusiasm for your newest spur of the moment decision, you start you stop you stop listening to his lecture on troll biology and focus instead on zapping to the moment his horn broke. Oh good, we're gonna get yet another backstory for how Equus's horn broke. That was one of my favorite running gags in Paradox Space. Like, you remember, like, the Paradox Space fan comic. They were, like, I think three or four different explanations for how Equus hor uh, broke his horn. <laughs> Troll biology is probably super uninteresting anyway, and, he'll, and you'll come right back here after and be able to contribute more to the conversation. You pop into familiar nothingness. But instead of appearing at a point in Equus's past, you feel yourself split. It's like looking at a magic eye puzzle, but with your whole body. You try to concentrate to align the segments into a whole, but it's too late. You think for a second it might be a cool new power, but it doesn't feel that different than before, only just triple. It's like there's narrative precedent for this moment existing in more than one plane of truth. <laughs> That's it! That's the problem! The problem is, like, we're... It's like, it's like, like, there are multiple explanations for how Equus broke his horn, and we just popped into all of them at once. <laughs> oh. Unable to do anything else but sit here in, par in space, contemplating this paradox, you watch. He looks a little younger, but not much. He's beating the shit out of a robot, but it's not the same as it was when you saw it before, however briefly. Uh, then his movements have been smooth, even in their rage, like he wasn't afraid until you show until you showed up. Here in this weird half-present space, his movements are erratic, 
He swings wildly, unthinkingly, like there is nothing left inside of him but one last flicker of fury. His teeth are gritty against tears, and he looks just and he just looks so tired. You want to pull you want to pull him back, to make him rest. You see him reach the same conclusion, but not at all how you meant it. He just stops. The robot does not. You feel him close his eyes. At the same moment, you see another snapshot of time, much further back. There's a little grub, probably its way up a, st a stalagmite in a cave. It's definitely a precarious pace, place, but it still feels somehow safe to you, for some reason. Safe, but also, like, super violent? Who knows? There's a lot going on right now. Uh, he, crawls to the, he crawls to the top and roars a baby-clicking roar, eyeing a taller cave precipice. You see this little, but you see his little behind wriggle as he moves to jump. Over top of that, there's another Equus looking about the same as he does now, just plus one horn, out for a stroll in the moonlight. This one is about to cross the street when a majestic seer, when, when a majestic herd of hoofbeasts. That's not that's not how herd is spelled in this situation. When a majestic herd of hoofbeasts crests the faraway hill, he stops, transfixed as the animals gallop across the plain. He does not hear the approaching scuffle buggy. You watch all of this from your floating void standpoint, unable to stop it. The arcs of their falls align in cosmic synchrony, synchrony, uh, synchrony, in cosmic synchrony. Uh, hair fanning out like a banner of defeat. The echo of the crack the horns makes as their shadow, as their sh as they shatter, reverberates in your teeth. You yell as all three equuses hit their respective grounds. You can't help it. You've started to care about this guy a little bit. As the sound leaves you, all three of them turn their injured heads to look at you in unison, and you freeze. Shit, that's probably not supposed to happen, right? You were just watching, not changing anything. You barely know what you're doing. Though, though, so you can never be sure. You zap immediately back to the present, winded and dizzy. You feel deeply, suddenly corporeal, like you did, like you do when you step off a boat onto the shore, but with each atom of your body, body separately and all at once. Equus is standing exactly where you left, totally unchanged, still yammering about anatomy. Whew, good to know that he got fucked up in the future after you... Wait. You were there. He pauses, shaking his head to clear it as his memories realign. I don't know how I didn't remember. You, I accepted your offer of friendship, and you repaid me with, your tom, with this tomfoolery. You knew how it happened all this time, and yet you played ignorant. Jockeying for position as someone in my trust, only to play me for a fool. No, see, you didn't before. It wasn't until after you went back to back that this became the thing how became the way things went. See, the way time travel works is. Do not explain time travel to me. What do you take me for? You're still reeling a bit from seeing him so vulnerable by varying definitions of vulnerable, you guess, but still. You know how you got this information. You know how you got this information from an unfair source, but now you have it. You don't feel right just leaving. There's more to Equus than you originally thought, and you can still feel the chance to learn more about him slipping away. I don't know what it is you want from me, but you will not receive it. Whatever connection you feel to him in this moment, he clearly does not return it. And ah, shit, he's starting to get pissed. Sweat begins to beat on his temple. Your brain, scrambling to grasp a hold of any thoughts that isn't your adject friendship failure, latches on to the realization that, sweat and all, his hair somehow still looks really good. Would that be a good time to ask him about what products he... I don't think this allegiance is going to work out. You will leave. I must get back to my business. Your heart sinks as he turns his back to you, presses a button on the back of a robot's neck, and rolls his shoulders. Goodbye. Shunned. Yeah, and none of those were what happened in Paradox Space. So yeah, it's just kind of a canon fact that there is no canon explanation for how Equus lost this war. Which, okay. It's how we're doing that, I guess. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so yeah. Hey, we're going on with this post non canon stuff. Oh yeah, he is a void player, so that probably factors into it. But yeah, it's I think it, it's him being a void player, it's like, yeah, that might have something to do with it, but really I think it's just this whole 
nebulous, non nothing. This whole like nothing is canon business that that post Homestuck is on, which as I've talked about before is not really a subject I'm really all that into because, eh, <laughs> you know. Like it, like here's my problem. Okay, like here's my problem with the direction that the Homestuck franchise is going right now is that we fandom didn't need an invitation to do this to invent our own canon we do it anyway but the reason why we do it is because like 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 here's the thing is that like maybe and maybe this is just me but the impression i always get whenever we see uh like andrew hussey or somebody else talking about why Homestuck is going in the direction it's going is because, like, they want to, like, is because, like, they want, uh, you know, the fandom to be involved in their direction of how the story goes. And the problem is that, like, fans do that already. And the impression I get is that, like, 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 the problem is that, like, the reason why fans do it is because something in canon is broken. Like, it always feels like it feels like Hussey wants us to write fix, fix, uh, uh, fix, fix, it's hard to say that out loud, write a fix, fix, to fix something that is broken in canon. Well, if you just didn't break canon, we wouldn't need to do that. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like I'm all fine with like exploring other corners of like what these characters can do and stuff. But, like, it kind of feels like you're just putting the work on the fans to write the story at this point. And it's like, okay, well, but, like, you, you, but, like, we still need, like, a bedrock to, like, cling to, to, like, launch off of to do that. And if we don't have a good bedrock, you're not going to do that. And, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's a whole thing with me. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, so that was the end of Equus. Uh, fun character stuff with him, at least. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of fun character stuff with Equus. Um, so that's that. NSPA Reader is still wearing their dress that they got from Kanaya. That's cute. Um... Yeah, like, crack AUs, it's like, I mean, like, people were writing crack AUs even before this post-canon nonsense, and, th and that's my point, is that, but, like, the thing is, like, to do that, like, to write, a, it's, like, almost like, like, there is no such thing as a crack fit, frick, fit, ugh. it's hard to say that word out loud for me for some reason, you know, it's like, you know, like, a crack fit almost doesn't have any meaning anymore, because if there is no canon, then, not, then there is no standard by which a fic can be clear, called, like, weird, you know? And it's like, and it's like you're just making everything nebulous. And it's like, and I don't like it, is really what it comes down to. It's like, you're making everything nebulous and I don't like it. And I don't much see the point in it. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. Because, like, like, the thing is, like, the... The conversations you see around Homestuck feel very much like the conversations you see around the Terminator franchise or the Star Wars franchise. And always what it comes down to with these sorts of things is just there's something about the canon story that we don't like. And so we want to change it. Well, so like, is Hussey telling us that he's intentionally writing Homestuck 2 in a way to piss us off? Is that like... Is that the hidden message behind all this? Because, cause like, if so, I'm just going to stop reading Homestuck. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm not going to write a fix fix to fix your shit. I'm just going to stop reading Homestuck. You know? And maybe that's not. Maybe that's just me, like, you know, projecting too much shit from other fandom arguments I've seen throughout history. But, like, that's kind of what it feels like. That's kind of the direction that Homestuck feels like it's going. I don't know. And it's like, and that does sound like Hussey. It's like, well, and that's the thing, is that, like, it does. So, okay, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, so yeah, that, it's like that ending got me, put me in a bad mood now, because it got me thinking about, 
like the wider implications of this franchise going forward. But I mean, otherwise, this was good. We got like good Equus stuff. Like it's fun when Equus gets to be a character. Like it was fun last week too when Gamji got to be a character. Like that's the one good thing about Pester Quest is that, like, like I'm actually kind of looking forward now. Like I I joked earlier in the video about how everything's going to be downhill after Terra Z because all the other trolls. Because none of the other trolls are as good as her. But Pester Quest really is one of the best ways to, like, really dig into these characters. Because, like, because, like, I mean, we never got to spend much time with Feffery. We never got to spend much time with uh, Equus. And and now here we are. We just get, like, an hour to where we just get an hour of them. We just get an hour to ourselves picking their brain apart and seeing how they how they tick. And, you know, that's great. That's especially great for the characters who didn't get much. That's great for the characters that were already favorites, like Vriska or Terracy. And it's especially great for the characters who we didn't get the chance to get to know all that well. Um, so, yeah. I hope they do, don't do Aridin dirty. It's like, yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I am actually legit looking forward to what they do with Aridin. Like, so far, I think they will do something good with him. Because... Because you know what, there is probably a deeper Aridin story to tell, and I think we might see it here in Pester Quest. If it doesn't get bogged down in everything, in in the if it does, assuming it doesn't get bogged down in this nebulous everything is canon, so nothing is canon bullshit that we're playing around with. Anyway, I'm gonna stop here uh, because I'm just rambling now. Uh, I'm gonna get a new drink, and then we're gonna go meet Terezi. See ya.